Effectors, welcome back to the Mass Effect Lorecast. This is your host, Tom, and I'm here with Sam. Welcome back, Sam. How's it going, man? It's going great. Uh, you know, I'm happy that we're back talking about lore. You know, we took a week off uh, a couple weeks ago because I was just really burnt out with my day job, but I am happy to be back today, and we've got more Liara. Yeah, more Liara, and man, there's a good bit of stuff in here. We're in the inter... inter game period still that's where we're starting off right and we talked about last time how she was chasing down shepherd's remains uh during the two years that shepherd was dead uh and then you said wait so, so you said she ends up working with cerberus that's, that's where we left off right yeah that's so that's basically you know the first part of the mass effect redemption comic and we covered that last episode we were talking about liara basically she is trying to hunt down shepherd's remains uh and she runs into farron this is this is how she met farron uh and then she also runs into miranda with Cerberus because it appears that they're all after the same goal. Right. Uh, and so if you want to hear more about that first half, go back and listen to that first episode. But today we're going to talk more about where she goes after agreeing to work with Cerberus to hunt down Shepard's remains. And hopefully we get through the rest of this comic because there is a ton of lore in here. So, uh, so you're saying uh, for people who aren't fans of Liara, that they're going to be waiting a bit still because I feel like I feel like we've got, most of these characters we do maybe three episodes on right. Uh, well, this is already the fourth one on Liara, and we're not even I think so. We're not even Mass Effect two yet. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, we're just going to cover some key parts from this comic, but yeah, we haven't even gotten into her lore in Mass Effect two or three yet, or how she appears in Andromeda. So I'll try and break this uh, Liara series up with a tangential topic if I can come up with one. Uh, but if anyone else has any ideas, please do let us know. Right. I also remember we left off with the um, the Giga Chad uh, Solarian. Remember him? And um, <laughs> he was seeing Shepard's remains in the cryostasis. So what happens after that? Right. Giga Chad Solarian, uh, stone jaw uh, lizard man. So <laughs> Farron and Liara have followed these blue suns mercenaries to a hangar where Shepard's remains are being transferred to the Shadow Brokers agent, who is the Giga Chad Solarian named Tazik. And Liara and Farron are watching this deal go down from afar. And so Liara uh, almost loses her cool after seeing the actual stasis pod where Shepard's remains are. And she wants to jump into the fray and, you know, is basically exuding this like taking all comers approach, you know, let me at him, let me at him. And again, that's so different, you know, from the highly analytical think first, act, act later approach that we had seen from her in Mass Effect 1 up until this point in the lore. Yeah, yeah, we're seeing this other side of her, which we discussed a lot on the last episode about her. Yes, this extremely impulsive, you know, kind of stakes are too high to, to sit back and think about this for a second, which is surprising from an Asari, too, because they have such long lifespans that we rarely see urgency from yeah. them. Yeah. Do you think it has anything to do with dealing with the uh, Giga Solarian Chadzik? Maybe. Can Maybe we just that call has him, worried <laughs> Can we just Chadzik. call him Chadzik from now on? <laughs> Chadzik. Sure, yeah. And I'm, I've also headcanon that his voice is still just as high <laughs> right. as a Solarian's is. <laughs> right. Even though he looks like he's seven feet tall. Right, right. Uh, <laughs> so so Farron, Farron sees Liara losing her cool, right? And he tries to stop her, saying, stop, stop, stop. This is way too risky. And then she snaps at him, holding him by the collar, you know, and saying, I've crossed the galaxy for this fair and i'm not going to give you time to change your mind uh because remember at this point she also has realized that farron is a double agent yeah right okay so so all this is like coming to a head here yes ultimately farron comes up with this plan to use a mounted gun that's nearby to try and try and fire and disable Tazik's ship before Tazik can blast off with the remains and, and get out of there. Uh, and meanwhile, Liara is trying to work up to, to getting up close, you know, uh, up close and personal so that she can take advantage of this chaos. But Farron misses the shot. Oh, oh, on a static ship. That's, <laughs> that's sitting right there. No good. In the hangar. <laughs> no good. You had one job, buddy. One job. You had one job, Farron. Come on. Come on, man. <laughs> what are you doing? And but we, so, we have an image, right, of, of the uh, the scene from the comic. I'm going to put this up while you continue talking. 
Yeah, yeah. So Liara, I'm going to basically summarize what are in the panels right here. Liara charges in with some like sweet biotic punches. I love the artwork here. Uh, and yeah, this is I was I was thinking the same thing. Some of the artwork on the previous ones, we were like, eh, it's a little sketchy. I, this art looks great. Yeah, like there's some blue biotic fields encapsulating her fists and her left leg while she looks like she's uh, spinning a biotic kick on a mercenary, a Blue Suns mercenary. And <laughs> Tazik is in the background saying, now I remember why I work alone. Excuse me. Now I remember why I work alone. <laughs> Chadzik, yeah. <laughs> Chadzik also then uh, starts launching his grenade launcher saying, screw them all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, same voice. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Perfect, perfect. So, um, so Liar is going in. Tazik unloads, and in the middle of this chaos, uh, Tazik is actually able to get the remains onto his ship and fly out of the hangar because he's like, you know, screw this, I'm out. Okay. See ya. All right. Uh, and that leaves Liara just kind of helplessly watching as Shepard's remains and her hopes in tow escape her grasp yet again 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 so close so close but so far thanks chadzik and yeah this is kind of a trope right this is kind of a trope like hero gets within inches of grasp and then loses again right and it's you also know. that interperiod between the games so clearly certain things can't happen like there's definitely boundaries on the story here right yeah we know because mass effect 2 ultimately shepherd comes back so they're they're really trying their best to to emphasize a little bit of desperation and mm -hmm. urgency here right uh and this would be demoralizing for liara right because she has traveled the galaxy at this point she's almost been killed multiple times trying to track down someone's remains who she knows is dead or at least in very bad shape uh and it's and it's almost like for naught, you know, she just keeps running into these barriers over and over and over again. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So where do we go next? What happens next? So, you know, I guess this is also the same time that the artists figured now would be great. Now would be a great time for a healthy butt shot. Oh, and there it so, is. There, yep. There it is. Oh, yep. Uh, and no legs. It's it's this weird. You have to go look at the images on this. Go check out our YouTube channel if you want to check these out or the live stream. Welcome to the. Thank you for being here for the live stream. Uh, so if you look at the screen, you've got an image where you have like the boxes like they're they're playing with the comic book art in really creative ways where things are coming out of the sides of the boxes. And then you have a Liara from behind, uh, but also didn't continue drawing her legs through the bottom of the screen. Don't know why that was, but OK, it's like midway through her thigh. I, anyway, the right. butt is in primary focus. They here. got they got the butt part, at least. I guess the important parts are in this in this image. So. And this is an ongoing joke, by the way, in terms of how female characters are framed in the Mass Effect comics, that there right. are a lot of butt shots. Right. Where's Chadzik's butt? Yeah, I'd like to see Stone Jaw <laughs> McCallahan's butt over here. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. All right. So uh, she's saying, get off me. I've got to find oomph. <laughs> yeah. Shepherd. Shepherd. Yeah. And then yeah, as the as Tazic's escapes. ship leaves the hangar. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so a weird time for a butt shot, but whatever. Uh, <laughs> I'd love to know which artist lobbied for that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Hey, you know, we really got to fit like X, like th at least three butt shots in this comic or else, you know, uh, readership is going to die <laughs> it was, down. It was in the agreement with EA when they signed up to do the comic. They're like, all right, this many, uh, this many issues, this many pages per issue. Uh, this is the artist. These are the writers. Oh, and yeah, three butt shots per episode. <laughs> They're like, what? Three, You're like, yep. Three. <laughs> We need a three to one page to butt shot ratio. <laughs> right, right. Think of yeah. the early version of the, the pages and they're like, nope, not enough butts. Do it again. Mm. Needs more butt. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, you know, at this point, Liara has already had little trust in Farron. And now she apparently believes he intentionally misses that shot so that she would once again get screwed over and that Shepard's remains would go back to the Shadow Rooker. Yeah. So she's like, you know, is he just here to sabotage me? And the two argue and Liara reluctantly agrees to put aside her doubt because the important part here is finding Shepard and time is slipping away. And Farron has an ability to chase Tazik. So they rush to Farron's ship. And the two tail his ship through a relay, which Farron says is likely headed toward the broker's only base on the planet, Alangon. 
On the other side of the relay jump, though, they so they go through the relay, you know, zoom. <laughs> that's my relay sound. Zoom, zoom, and they go, zoom. Yeah, that's what the relay sound like. Uh, zoom, zoom. <laughs> like, just imagine the THX sound like blasting out your eardrums. Wah. There it is. <laughs> y- yes, that is effective. That's Mass Effect THX. Yeah, there you go. Um, that's what Ezo sounds and, like <laughs> when you get too close. <laughs> and so they go through the relay jump and the broker's sentries start attacking Farron's ship, even though he, he works for the broker. So Liara is surprised. Yeah. But you know what? Hey, the guy likes his secrecy. So a no unannounced arrivals. That's how it's explained to Liara. Uh, and keep in mind that they are in a transport vessel. So when the sentinels start attacking Farron's ship, they can't really fight back. And that leads us to this very Han Solo-esque sequence with Farron piloting the ship through a mined out asteroid trying to lose these Sentinels. Oh, nice. Nice. So do they do they make it? Do they get to the broker's base? Like, how does this play out? Well, you know it. You know, (laughs) the the two descend uh, ultimately after having, you know, skirted their their tail with those sentinels and they, they don't get they eaten, by, in, eaten by like a giant space worm or anything there was no appearance of a giant space worm although that would have been a little bit on the nose yeah but also like you know apropos uh, <laughs> so the two descend onto the planet alangon which we'll talk about more about later uh but Farron comes up with this plan to get past the guards at the front door uh and his plan is that liara will pose as his prisoner Oh, the old prisoner shtick. Yes. Didn't Thor and Loki do this? Yeah. Oh, my God. How many people have done this? Yeah, right. <laughs> like, right. Like this. Yeah. This just is one of those things that just shows up over and over again. Yeah. The guards recognize him, but they question why he's not on, quote, the list. You're not on the list. The broker says that he's not expecting you. Why? You know, everyone that he's expecting should be on the list. Why are you not on it? Yeah. And. Yeah. He says, uh, didn't like he, he asks one of the guards, you know, are you really wanting to upset the shadow broker? Do you want to second guess his list? You know, are you how about you, Joppa, the guard? Are you the broker? Because, <laughs> 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 yeah, it's, it's too mysterious. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then he says, you know, no, I'm, I, I won't be the I'm not the broker. It can, actually, can we bring up that image yeah, yeah. again from sure. the comic? Uh, he says, no, I'm not the broker, you know, and, and then they're basically like can, persuaded by him. But then he asks Farron, what business are you running today? And then Farron says, well, it obviously involves shapely Asari escorts. Oh, Maybe God. I can find another one for you on my own, my, my next run. Huh? Eh, and eh, he, eh, nudge, nudge, eh, wink, wink. Eh, eh, eh. Say no more. And you see Liara in the background here. <laughs> yes, she's like, if I could zoom in easily, I would zoom right in on her face because she's just like not, she's like, what? Yeah, yeah. that's a death glare. That's yeah. a death glare at Farron. And uh, and then anyway, they walk past them. That, that kind of, that con works, right? So... Yet again, we see another instance in the same comic where Asari are being hypersexualized, put in a slave-like position, right? And then discussed mm-hmm. as if they're property. It's, I mean, that's kind of a Star Wars thing, too. Where the ladies with the long tendrils that come off their heads? The um, Twi'leks? Twi'leks, Twi'leks right? is that Twi'leks? what Yeah. I, I mean, it feels Twi'leks. like a very similar kind of thing. You know, like attractive female people that get, you know, enslaved like job of the hut that's a, a situation you know from the original series like yeah it seems this feels like a sci-fi thing i'm sure star trek has uh, dealt with this as well especially the original series yeah it was a, sti- a sci-fi trope for a while and we know that you know when asari were first created in mass effect they were envisioned as the sexy blue alien chicks right, you know that's right. their words from the art team you know so uh but they they get past the guards and w- while they're walking into the base they actually see a collector who's talking with a volus about you know where to pick up shepherd's remains and this is, you know, I just want our listeners to realize that this is how close the collectors got to almost obtaining Shepard's remains and then dooming the galaxy. Can you imagine? I mean, maybe you could play out the story and make it not doom the galaxy. But how do you bring Shepard back if it's not? It, you, you know, you get what I'm saying? Like, it would be an interesting twist, like, but I don't know where you go from there. 
there was some zombified kind of like evil shepherd that the collectors <laughs> resurrected, right? And then like some, oh, you know what? I got it. It's Hallmark. It's cheesy. It'll work. Your love interest in the game kisses evil shepherd and that brings them back. <laughs> Wait, brings them back to being good shepherd or just brings... To, to being good shepherd, like, yeah. <laughs> so then they like wake up, right? The, the red lights <laughs> dull in their eyes and they shake their head a little bit and go, oh, I felt like I was in a dream. <laughs> Oh no, a nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. See, we could we could do this. We could write this. I'm going to arm armchair quarterback a totally advanced <laughs> RPG sci-fi game. Um, <laughs> sure. But you know, the 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 collectors are right there or at least there's one and it's talking to a Volus and Liara is once again, you know, like, okay, let me at him. Let me at him, but Farron encourages her again to be patient. Instead, he takes her to the shadow broker, reminding her about the same goal that the elusive man wants. Almost more importantly than obtaining Shepard's body itself, they want answers as to why do the collectors even want Shepard. Dun, dun, dun. I need the dun, dun, dun sound here until we can just like leave it on a cliffhanger as we go into the Best I can do is dramatic fart. Okay, let's go for it. (laughs) uh wait hold on no it's on my stream it's on my stream deck let's see if it'll play i don't, I don't think it will mm. is that playing no no oh okay. no no there. i don't think it would sorry no dramatic fart for you but wait, we do have wait. The- actually i do have it i do have it i think i know why i wasn't playing let me try this again this is the joys of live broadcasting by the way <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's not coming through at all. And now I'm echoing. Now, it sounded like it sounded like somebody was underwater going. <laughs> that's yeah, that's not that's not quite a dramatic fart as it is a muffled fart. I think I, I you know what? You know what it is? I'm using NVIDIA broadcast uh, and yeah. it, it, it's it cancels it out. out all sound that is not what it identifies as a voice. Right. So. Yeah. It, it clearly doesn't think the fart is voice. So there you anyway. go. Maybe we'll just leave this in the final episode because that was exciting. But we've got to go take a quick break and go thank our, our patrons. So don't go anywhere. Message coming in. Patching it through. I am sovereign, and this lore cast is mine. I like the sound of that. All right, here we are. We're in the middle of the show. This is where we get to thank our patrons, and a big shout out to Luke, our newest patron who signed up in the last week. Thank you so much for being here. Shout out to all of our current patrons for your support. We couldn't do it without you. Patreon.com slash Mass Effect Lorecast if you want to check out ways to help out the show. Also, if you feel like just giving us something back because we're helping you get through your work day or your commute or your workout at the gym or mowing your lawn because spring's coming. So get ready. Mow your lawn. Uh, but thank you to Luke for signing up. And we have to shout out our Shepherd tier patrons, Ed Boy, Kira C, Lieutenant Tusino, and William. Thank you so much for your support as well. Also, if you'd like to help us out in other ways, you can leave a five star review on Apple Podcasts. We mention this every week, but we love these reviews. They really do make us feel good and and make our week. Plus, we get to read out your words on a future episode of the show. So you're welcome to do that as well. You can also rate the show on Spotify or whatever podcast you're listening to this on. You join us in the live stream. There's all sorts of fun ways to engage with it. So thanks for being here. Let's move on with the rest of the story and find what happens after this cliffhanger. Here we go. Well, actually, we we have the planet card. Oh, that's right. Planet cards. They happen in the middle part of the show i forgot planet card planet card we got it it's alangon because that's where they are that's the planet where they are so Al- alangon was I, aragorn's uh less attractive little brother <laughs> alangon mm-hmm. yeah yeah he's like i'm, it looks a- I'm like- aragorn i'm going to be the king of the lord of the rings and alangon's like <laughs> cool <laughs> can i come along too and he's like no there's only seven of us in the party probably best if you sit this one out yeah it's just you make the rest of the party feel uncomfortable um <laughs> so alan gone apparently means deceptive and it was so named by salarian scouts because as their probes landed on the planet uh their instruments started going awry and this turned out to be due to the high concentration of magnetically active periclase magnesia in the core and crust of the planet this interferes with scans and broadcasts which has given rise to countless spacer stories of pirates lying in wait in alan gone's magnetosphere or 
crashed ships with untold fortunes stranded on the surface. In reality, any pirates would have a hard time locating prey amid all the interference and would live lives cut off from the rest of the galaxy because the magnetosphere kills extraplanetary communication. Alangon's other natural features are a thin atmosphere of carbon dioxide, spectacular dry ice formations, and xenon gas, which can be skimmed from the upper atmosphere and used in ion thrusters. Also, panda bears. Weird. They've got panda bears there. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't xenon one of those gases that if you inhale, it actually makes your voice deeper? Oh, is it? It may be. Like one of those heavy gases that like lowers. Yeah. It, it might be. That does sound kind Maybe of Maybe Tazic needs a little bit of that. <laughs> right? Chadzik? Chadzik? Chadzik. He's Chadzik like, I'm a Solarian. A and they're like, you don't sound like you look. And he's like, hold on a second. Hey, everybody. I'm Chadzik. <laughs> they're like, oh, shit. Oh, now Chadzik's you sound here. Now you sound right. Oh, Chadzik showed up. Where were you? <laughs> so I was already here. No, you weren't. What if, you know, in his hard suit, he has like, instead of an oxygen tank in the back, <laughs> it's xenon so that he, when he has his helmet on, his voice going through the communicators is super deep and, and intimidating. Right. But then as soon as he takes his helmet off, yeah, it's super, super high pitch. He's like Darth Helmet. Do you remember Spaceballs? Yes. Like with, with the mask on, he sounds like this. And then he takes it off and he just sounds normal. Yeah. Yes. That'd be amazing. That would be amazing. Yeah. All right. There we go. Planet card. Thanks for the planet card. Let's uh, let's move on with the rest of the show. Here we go. Spit it out, or are you trying to build suspense? You're so dense, sir. Obviously, I do not know as much about human relationships as I thought. All right, so we're back, and Liara and Farron come face to face with the Shadow Broker. That's what happens here. Like, yeah. But if she's seen him before. Then why is she surprised he's a Yogg in Mass Effect 2, right? Like, isn't there It's kind of a hole? There's like a little plot hole going on. Right? Yeah, there's a little asterisk with, you know, them coming face to face. They, they, they come as close as Farron ever has to the broker. But it turns out to be a hologram, like, made from a robot effigy oh. of what looks to be a human person. So all this secrecy and, and the guards on the planet, it's really just to protect a hologram, apparently. Okay. Okay. Uh, that's how paranoid this guy is. All right. So we got another image. So check this out. So, all right. So uh, you want to explain what's going on in this one? Sure. So in this in this picture, you know, we get a really stellar profile uh, shot of both Liara and Farron. And he was telling her that, you know, when you have questions, when you want answers, like why are the collectors after Shepard's body, you go to the source. And so here they are facing this robotic hologram thing of the Shadow Broker, mm -hmm. which asks Farron, reporting in for work, Farron? Ah. And, and then the hologram asks Farron, uh, since when do you think that you can come here uninvited? And you should not, or you should understand when I say that there, the collector's offer was too good to pass up. So Liara has bitter tongue enough and she's done holding back. She's done with uh, listening to Farron's patience. So she lays into the broker demanding answers from him saying, I don't understand selling anyone selling my friend's remains. And the broker remains cool, addressing Liara by name and telling her, look, it's just business. Nothing personal. Yeah. And by the way, I know who you are. <laughs> so a little yes. subtext in that. Yeah. Absolutely. Like, ah, yes. I've been expecting you. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, <laughs> Liara. Hmm. Nice to see you finally face to face. <laughs> do you think all, yeah, all he like needed that? to do, he needed to pivot around in his like spinny chair. You right. know, right. that, that, that would have been perfect. Holding a white cat. Too. Twir twirling a mustache. Um, yeah. <laughs> so the, the broker, you know, uh, basically has expected her and Liara meanwhile is continuing to to approach and walk up to the broker's hologram telling him you don't know what you're dealing with Ex oh wait you know what I was going to do I was doing the Liara voice before oh yeah so oh, yeah, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. so she tells the broker you don't know what you're dealing with Shepard died looking for evidence of the Reapers the ones who attacked the Citadel did you ever consider the collector's interest might be related to that what could possibly be worth the risk? <laughs> Should I? Do we want to sound like a yog, or do we want to sound like a mustache twirling villain? Like, 
I don't know. Either one works. I mean, the mustache twirling villain is more fun. Also, because this is a projection, it may be like voice shifted in a way to make it not give away the identity. Right. So uh, the broker asks, now, what risk? It's just a corpse. <laughs> and Liara says, if they're looking for just a corpse, I can give them one. Ooh. <laughs> Which, you know, Ooh. zinger. Zinger. Uh, I got pretty bold. I just go in blasting. I just blasted him. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, I started blasting. Yeah. That's uh, what she's, yeah. That's what she's channeling. Liara as Frank Reynolds. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine an always sunny Mass Effect mashup? That would be great. We should always that sounds cloudy like, on Alan Gone. Oh my God, that sounds like a patron episode where everyone everyone casts Always Sunny with Mass Effect characters. Anyway, uh, we need to keep going with the story because that could turn into an entire rest of this episode. But oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so so she's obviously being confrontational, and then it turns out that this whole thing, this you know back and forth between the Shadow Broker and Liara, it was a distraction that they manufactured to get the broker talking. Meanwhile, Farron was snagging data that he needed from a nearby terminal, and he tells Liara to let loose. And Liara does. And she just goes, you know, ape shit, <laughs> destroying the robotic, you know, broker avatar and, and a lot of his control room too, it looks like. And the artwork here, again, is just so cool. I love this comic book panel. Check this out. And again, I'm so sorry if you're only on audio. You really need to come and look at these things. We've got Liara just trashing the place, glowing blue, almost like tendrils of like energy and lightning, like almost like biotic lightning flying off her body. It's really cool. Yeah. 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 She's going like the Mass Effect equivalent of Super Saiyan, you know, and she's she's like casting her arms out. And yeah, it looks like there's these biotic lashes yeah, like going out, waves. destroying the room. Right. Yeah. And she's picking things up and throwing it around. And then there's a, a crash sound. I don't know if that's just like the sound of the energy, like rippling off of her. This it's yeah, I so think that's good. supposed to be that biotic lightning kind of thing. It yeah. looks like lightning anyway. That's yeah. just exuding off of her. Right. Um, it's real good. Yeah, so that room is trashed. <laughs> That's a, that room is done. Um, so doesn't wait. So doesn't the whole base know that they're there? Like at this point, like how are they going to get out alive? Through some kick-ass combat montages. Oh, sweet, <laughs> That's, sweet. That's where we are in the comic at this point. There's not a lot of dialogue over the next several pages, but again, the artwork is really cool, and Liara has let loose. You know, she's kicking ass and taking names. Actually, she didn't care about their names. She's just kicking ass. Yeah, yeah. She's oh man, like, wh what would you describe she's doing in the top panel? What is what is that? With the, it looks like, like a biotic dodge. Yeah, it's. It's almost like the bullets are hitting like there's these like red bullets that are hitting a wall as she dodges out of the way, but they're glowing almost like it's like uh, it's it's really cool. And then she's doing this like biotic punch. It's yeah, I don't know. Knocking the teeth out of one of those Turian guards. Yeah, uh, from I'm, I'm the totally beginning. not describing this well enough, but it's very, very cool. Yeah, it is. It is. Uh, and her eyes are white. They're glowing oh, yeah. white. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Look at that. That's good Which point. is another trope for, you know, like this person is imbued with so much energy that their eyes are glowing white. Right. It's like leaking out of every orifice. <laughs> like, yeah. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> maybe, maybe not quite like that, but all right. <laughs> so during this montage, she actually takes out one of those Turian guards. And uh, it's one of the guards who said that he was, quote, looking for an Asari of his own. And oh, during oh, that whole prisoner oh, ploy. So, yeah. yeah. So she tells him while standing over him, aiming a gun at his head before presumably killing him. She tells him, be careful what you wish for. <laughs> I'll give you I'll give you one of your own. <laughs> right. Here. I was thinking I was thinking it was like a <laughs> like a dirty, hairy reference, you know, <laughs> be careful what you wish for. Punk. <laughs> punk. <laughs> Do you think she says punk? I don't think she's ever said punk in her life. <laughs> I would love it. I would love it if she had said punk, but she didn't. So, you know, and, and then it's revealed right after this fight that Farron was actually a triple agent. What? Not a double agent, a triple agent. That's too many hamburger patties. <laughs> I always stop at a double. <laughs> yeah, a, a triple is a little much. Triple's I did that much. when I was a teenager, but yeah. double is good now. Um, <laughs> double but, yeah. is good now, now that I'm old. 
<laughs> now that I'm older and my stomach has shrank a little bit. Although, you know what? The new Taco Bell menu is, is insane, but I could go oh, on no. about that. Oh, no. Yeah. We, neither um, of us have our teenage metabolism anymore. So, yeah, we absolutely need no. to be careful. And it's starting to show. <laughs> um, so, anyway, Farron is a triple agent and he's working for Cerberus. So, another dun dun dun. dun, you know, dun. He's working. For Dun dun, yeah. dun 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 it's like a triple dun dun plus and it know. turns out that even miranda doesn't know that he's working for cerberus mm. Mm. it's you know this is it, it's explained that this is why farron led her away from the body and in the beginning at that uh at afterlife on omega but then you know he let them get rescued by cerberus that was a little convenient right and it's why he intentionally missed the shot on Tazik's ship, that ah, ship that was sitting still right. in the hangar. He wanted to get back to the Allen Gun base. And he saw this as a way to trail Tazik without having too much, uh, raising too much suspicion. Right. But he says that when he was working for the Shadow Broker, the final straw for him was seeing that the broker was dealing with the collectors on acquiring Shepard's body. This was the final straw for him, and so he set in motion parts to kind of um, go against the broker back then. And he admits to Liara that his reputation because of this, as an information trader, is probably just done. You know, you can't, you cannot betray the broker like this and live to tell about it. And even if you live, you're never gonna work in the industry yeah, again. Yeah, you're just hiding out, you're not working. Sure. Oh, right. Yeah. But he needed this data on the broker's dealings so that he could give it to Cerberus because he is adamant that he never screws over a client and he agreed to get it for Cerberus. So he did. Uh, and <laughs> Liara's take on this is pretty interesting, right? She says, Farron, I know this might be strange for you to think about, but nobody ever said that information traders have to work for money. Hmm. Interesting. So she's trying a different angle with him. Right. And yeah. it's a little bit of foreshadowing, I think, for how Liara approaches the job as Shadow Broker when she becomes Shadow Broker later. Right. Yeah. This this series is actually really interesting that the Shadow Broker, I mean, I'm, clearly they did this intentionally, but the Shadow Broker stuff and Liara come together during the story because of what we all understand happens later. So, yeah, that's cool. So she tells Farron that she still doesn't know whether or not she can trust him, but that his actions have shown that he got her this close to getting Shepard's remains back. And she says, quote, words aren't the only things that speak the, I'm sorry, wait, words aren't the only things that speak the truth, she says, as, as she's gently touching his arm. So there's mm. a little bit of sexual tension there mm. in that panel, mm. just a little bit. Fair the traces of it. A handsome green and multicolored guy. Liara, huge fan of the movie The Shape of Water. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so so Farron, Farron shifts the conversation after saying, uh, <laughs> so he actually says, uh, and then he shifts the conversation saying, whatever happens, you get Shepard's body and the data out of here. And then the two go to where this transfer is happening between the collectors and Chadzik. And the two, the two get to this hangar uh, and Tazik is talking about the condition of Shepard's remains like it's something he brought into a pawn shop. Uh -huh. And he's talking to the pawnbroker saying like this, this bad boy, you know, like, like can fit so much shit in there. You know? <laughs> and, 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 Weird. And he says something while he's talking about this. He says something that's kind of breaking the fourth wall. He's looking at the cryostasis pod with Shepard's remains in it. And he says, tough to recognize. I know hard to tell if it's even a man or a woman blown to hell like that right right like like we don't want to infringe too much on your own personal canon yeah all right so this comic is is t painstakingly avoiding canonizing a shepherd yeah yeah that's smart it's smart because it still allows you to feel like it's your character all right you know and farron farron sees all this happening and decides he's going to run one last con attempt on tazik telling him that the broker wants all of the money up front not the half now half later like he like the broker actually agreed to with the collectors and this causes some confusion because Par farron is pointing out that the broker's internal com communications are down thanks to them right liara destroyed the room and then he sent Farron in person to tell Tazik. That's according to Farron. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And of course, it's a lie. Uh, so while they're all confused and Tazik says, you know what? Uh, just load the body onto the ship while we sort this out. 
While all that's going on, Shepard's remains are put on Tazik's ship, and then just as the collectors are catching on, they're realizing what's really happening, Liara jumps into the mix for another kick-ass combat montage. Nice. Nice. Tell me when to put the picture up. I'm ready. All right. Well, we can put it up, you know, now because this one doesn't go as well. The whole point was to merely distract them while Liara and Farron ran aboard Tazik's ship and make off with the body. But Farron is busy getting his ass kicked by Chadzik. Mm-hmm. Also, and, butt ooh, shot number two. Another butt shot. That's quite the butt crack, too. That's like that is a real, well up her back. Yeah, that goes, that goes pretty high. <laughs> but, all right. <laughs> um, so Liara's in full stride, running to Tazik's ship, saying, Farron, come on, let's go. And, and, and he is in a headlock. You know, he's in a headlock by, by Chadzik right now, just getting his teeth beat in. I love that you go uh, between Tazik and Chadzik. <laughs> Whenever you refer to him, it like alternates. <laughs> I use whichever one I'm feeling like. Um, <laughs> and so Farron is, is like, you know, he's not escaping. Uh, not escaping uh, Giga Chad Solarian's grasp. And he's shouting at Liara, Liara, go, go now, save Shepard. And she yells, and, Farron. And that's, that's, you know, what happens. She leaves. She, she just leaves him there? Like, leave. She has to leave Farron. What happens to Farron? He's taken back to the Shadow Broker. Oh, we don't no. rescue him until the Shadow Broker DLC in Mass Effect 2. Oh, that's, so, that's the end of his part of the story at this point. And he's just kind of... Yeah. Yeah. All right. He's, you know, he's, he's basically interrogated and tortured by the Shadow Broker in the meantime. Uh, but, you know, Liara has to run on board the ship and escape. But it's not really without regret. You know, she's looking back and, and there's, a, this, there's these few panels in the comic of her on board the ship. And she's looking at the data that Farron got and she said and they're flying away and she says we did it Farron you did it and so she clearly feels a lot of regret because this is you know her mission that she cared about and now he's going to get captured and as far as she knows at this point probably killed yeah she looks super um, bummed out in the picture too she is yeah. she is that and by the way that those panels just the artwork there huge hugely reminiscent of like cowboy bebop i don't know if you get that oh really that i haven't i'm not i'm not a big cowboy bebop guy but yeah it is it's interesting a, when when they use inspiration from other animation or whatever definitely you know like the loneliness the forlornness this the sorrow of it combined with like the 80s color palette and the angles i think really uh does a lot to show that kind of it, it evokes a feeling very similar to cowboy bebop mm-hmm. um so i thought that was cool um yeah. and then she escapes right because of course so, she has to but like right yeah but that's it that wraps so up the she's, story almost you know she gets back to the cerberus facility with shepherd's remains and the data and it's the lazarus project that's what they're working on there yeah and miranda tells her look you know bad news the body's in terrible shape we may not even be able to restore shepherd uh and liara replies that his revival was never really why she agreed to do this whether or not they could bring him back she says maybe i don't know what human traditions are but I really think you should let the dead rest. Uh-huh. And that sheds even more insight onto Liara's character that she would go through all of this, not, not really with the end goal of bringing Shepard back, mm-hmm. but just to make sure that his remains were respected. Right. Respect for the dead made this all worth it, even if they can't bring him back. Yeah, that's, or that's her touching. back, or yeah. yeah, him or her back. It's it's touching. Like, a, I mean, it it just genuine. I I think that there's some cool things that these comics do, and and sometimes they get stuff a little bit weird. But in this case, I feel like it gives us some really really poignant insight into her personality in ways that we don't always get, or at least hadn't gotten yet so far in Mass Effect One. Clearly, very idealistic. Yeah, you know the fact that she's willing to go the, to these ends, and you know um, Miranda and Liara go back and forth about Farron, you know, and it it just becomes evident that Cerberus really has no intention of rescuing him whatsoever. Miranda saying he knew what the risks are. Yeah, and right. yeah, I mean that's cold blooded, right? But Miranda urges Liara to focus her efforts and energy elsewhere, uh, and Liara agrees, saying that there's a lot more work to do now. 
uh, because we all have a new enemy. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Again. Yes. Yeah. And so that leads us right into the start of Mass Effect 2, where the collectors are uh, abducting human colonies. Yeah. No, this is cool. But this like really ties things together well. Sometimes it feels like they're putting a story on top of a story and just kind of squishing it in there. But this actually feels like, no, yeah, we've got all these threads. Why not? Why not complete the threads and make sure that everything connects directly in a way that's engaging and fun and interesting and gives us insight to other characters. And uh, I think this is actually really cool. Yeah, I agree. And, and, you know, as far as the comics go and the extended media, this is one of the stories where you can tell a lot more writing was done uh, to explain just how it was that Shepard's remains were recovered, first of all, who got them, and then how did they end up with Cerberus? Um, so, it explains a lot in that regard, and it also gives us a lot of insight as to, um, you know, how much Liara cared while Shepard was gone. Yeah. Yeah. No, this is cool. This has been a really fun look at this. So I guess that wraps up the comic books. So we're, we're moving into Mass Effect 2 territory next. Yeah, we're, we're going to move into Mass Effect 2 uh, with Liara's uh, interaction specifically in the Shadow Broker DLC. You know, she's not present for a large part of the game, but that DLC is all about her. Uh, and it's really her going back to the Shadow Broker's like, main base, where he actually is, on Hagalaz, Planet Hagendaz. Ha- Hagendaz. Yeah. And, yeah. And uh, finishing the job, so to speak. Nice, nice. I look forward to it. Well, this has been super fun. Thank you for being with us, chat, and uh, Sam, for taking me through that story. It's always fun to, to get your perspective on all this. Uh, you have anything else you want to share before we head out? Yeah, you know, I think I may have brought it up last week. So uh, the third episode of the Avengers audio drama that I voiced Jarvis in, that one's up. Uh, Just go ahead and go on YouTube, look up uh, Avengers audio drama. You should be able to find it. It's by Scyther Inc. Uh, And it's been a blast to do that. All of my lines were cold read. You know, I wasn't in studio with anyone. I was just sitting at home. Yeah. Um, And so that's been a blast. It's been very fun. Uh, And there's also uh my streams you know i'm still in the middle of my personal canon playthrough in mass effect 2 uh so i'm streaming that on weekends saturdays i try to hit uh saturdays around 2 or 3 p.m that i'm typically live and you can find me on twitch and twitter at in seven the legend nice go check it out you can also check out my shows robotsradio.net for the rest of my shows if you're getting into the fallout tv show which keeps on hyping i've seen people who have come back after seeing like the first few episodes saying no this is actually really really good i'm excited for it so if you're getting into fallout you're watching the tv show you want to find out more about that world i do a fallout lore cast we're almost 300 episodes in so there's plenty of content for you to check out there as well robotsradio.net or whatever podcast you're listening to this on you can just look that up and uh, we'll be back next week with more liara stuff so don't go anywhere Thanks for joining us, everybody, for the live show, and we'll see you next time. Stay safe out there, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to the Mass Effect Lorecast. We'd love to hear your opinion and thoughts on the lore of Mass Effect. Reach out to us on Twitter at Mass Effect Cast, or check out the Robots Radio Discord. Also, you can send us an email at MassEffectLorecast at gmail.com.